When considering quality and quantity of fish alongside natural beauty, I find this smallmouth bass fishery to be incomparable. This place, with its towering limestone walls, lush forests, and abundant life, leaves me in awe. And, speaking of the abundant life, have you ever seen such a prolific butterfly hatch? I'll admit it, the constant flapping of butterflies in your eyes, mouth, nose, and ears was a bit distracting at times. But one of the best parts of fishing is that it calms the mind. It's meditation. So here I am, getting after some smallmouth and spending some quality time with our excessive six-legged flying friends. It's going to be a good day. Fish on. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Just the beginning of an amazing day here. I know it's gonna be good. I fished this uh, small river once before. It was absolutely epic. Best smallmouth bass fishery that I know. <laughs> and I'm back for a redo. Been on the water for five minutes. I already hooked into a nice little smallmouth bass. I'm using a pretty cool little fly today. Um, it's actually a carp fly originally, but um, every characteristic about this fly is, in my opinion, incredibly well suited to smallmouth. Um, it's the McTage's Chubby Chaser is the name of the fly, created by a uh, carp fisherman in Denver. Uh, cool guy, really, really, really into carp. But um, this fly has uh, a headstand pattern. Uh, dumbbell eyes and then it has one tungsten bead up in front of that so it's got like kind of a it's got three beads essentially and um, a piece of rabbit fur sticking out the back so this thing will actually kind of stand up with its tail swinging in the current bounce along the bottom uh, this particular one's in a rusty kind of crayfish color so that's kind of the idea for today sticking with a crayfish pattern uh, bouncing it along the bottom along little areas of current and rock and uh, if I want to I can kind of move it quickly like a little streamer almost uh, so between those two methods you know I think we're gonna get a lot of strikes today there he is nice set of boulders right in the middle in the deepest part here had that fly just set down for a good long while set the hook and here we go I'm using the uh, Tenkara Rodco Kita. This rod is incredibly mid-flex. It's quite soft and it just flexes all the way to the handle, all the way through. And um, it's really, really good at pinning fish, keeping hooks pinned in fish's mouths. You know, they, they make runs, they move left and right, back and forth. And this rod just has a nice habit of uh, flexing with them, always keeping consistent pressure on the fly, um, and it really helps keep them pinned. Oh, 
There was a bite right there. Last time I came here, I was fishing a Clouser minnow, which is kind of a, a more low profile, a deer hair fly, um, and it imitates bait, imitates prey, minnows, etc. And uh, I was kind of working much more aggressively, and uh, I was getting a lot of smaller fish. Today, I think just focusing on uh, a little bigger fly, this crayfish imitation, a little slower presentation, seems like the average fish size has been a little bit bigger, which has been really nice. And not only that, but this Kita feels <laughs> totally ridiculous with a fish on the other end. I mean, this average creek-sized smallmouth feels <laughs> just incredible. You really can't understand how good tenkara rods in general can feel, and especially something that's so soft and mid-flex like this Kita. Um, it's, it's, it's really wild. It's really, really fun. We got another nice, nice little small on. Having an incredible time out here. Birds are singing. Such a different environment than my home in Colorado. Really, really nice to change things up. I think I could get pretty addicted to uh, warm water smallmouth fishing if I lived in the Midwest, that's for sure. This fish could be the nicest one yet. He's certainly fighting like it. I'm gonna tire him out just a bit more. I picked this rod today because it was gonna feel the best with the average size fish in here. There definitely are some bigger fish in here and if I get into one, uh, <laughs> I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have a match, that's for sure. It's gonna be tough. Not a bad sized fish. Gorgeous. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely enjoying this fly choice. This presentation is a lot slower, more methodical. Instead of uh, whipping a stream around, getting lots of bites, missing lots of strikes, you know, that can be fun in one sense as well because the action is just constant. Um, but I'm liking this approach where I'm kind of more strategically casting my fly behind rocks, letting it sit, and it just kind of reminds me of, you know, fishing a uh, Senko or a trick worm or something like that for bass. And uh, I come from that, that's kind of my history. So I like this a lot and uh, I just love sensing that strike and setting that hook and just having, having that solid hook set. Um, so it's, it's a lot of fun for sure. Carp flies for smallmouth. You know, I'm sure I'm not the first guy to do that. I'm sure there's plenty of uh, dedicated smallmouth flies that have just some minor tweaks here and there that share a lot of similarities to this so-called carp fly. Um, but uh, that's what I've got tied up, and uh, I can definitely highly recommend headstanding carp flies for smallmouth. I'm going to fish up to this fallen tree with a lot of patience, slowly and stealthily. Last time I came here, I caught an absolutely monstrous smallmouth, tucked right in between the V of this tree. Who knows if he's still chilling in there or not, or if another one is. It's certainly some really, really good smallmouth habitat. Good place for a big smallmouth to be holding. Uh, so I'm just gonna work my way up slowly, make sure I don't spook anything. I'm uh, genuinely a little bit worried about hooking, hooking a smallmouth the size that I have caught here on this rod, <laughs> especially around these trees, but uh, <laughs> we're going for it. Let's see what happens. Casting and stepping. Two steps, one cast, rinse and repeat. I really don't want to uh, 
step on or near a bass that I have not casted to. Just had a little rise up there. Uh, certainly some fishy, fishy activity going on. Looked to be a smallmouth, I would assume. Chasing some forage of some kind. There are some little chubs in this stream. It could have been one of those guys hitting something off the surface. They definitely do that, kind of like trout. Um, but it was pretty splashy. I'm thinking it was a smallmouth. Ooh, what do we got here? A little chub. <laughs> it's a big fly for you, dude. Oh, cool. Pretty cool. I want to say this is a horny head chub. Lots of common names for these guys. Looks to be a male in breeding colors, too. <laughs> Quite a cool little chub. Always love some multi-species action. I'm sure that uh, handsome fellow was probably guarding his nest. Definitely in like prime breeding colors. Pretty cool. Only caught a couple of those in my life. Really nice bass, just tried to eat the fly. He's coming right towards me. Really, really nice fish. I don't know if you guys can see him. Oh God, an even bigger one's right behind him. Oh my gosh. Absolute beast, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Oh my God. Freaking ate it again. Nibbled at it. Saw his mouth go. Missed the hook set. Come on. Seriously nice fish. I lost track of him. I don't see him right now. It's, oh, here we go. Six, seven feet in front of me is one of them. I can't believe I missed both of those hook sets. It looked solid. It looked solid. I waited and everything. <laughs> uh, pulled it right out of their mouths both times. Dang it. Oh, here he is. Man, these are nice fish. I'm tempted to kind of see if I can trigger a reaction strike. Oh, he's following, following, following. Eat it, eat it. Dropping it right by him. Come on. Still here. Circling around. Chances are getting slim. This guy's going to bite again. The more I mess with him, the less likely we got here.
My goodness, two really nice bass. Okay, good pass here, good pass here. It's about to intercept him. Oh, right by him, right by him. I wonder if they have a bed. It's, uh, it's early June. Is that smallmouth nesting season? I really don't know. There we go. Not the big one we were looking for. Still feels dang good though. Oh, that big one's following him. <laughs> Small mouth are such jerks. Oh man. <laughs> the fish following this guy is at least, I'd say, two and a half, three times the size. Cool to see at least. Cool to know that there's smallmouth of that caliber in this place. This is truly the best smallmouth fishery that I've ever fished. Between the scenery, numbers of fish, solitude, and uh, the potential for quality, it's pretty unparalleled. There we go. Really gorgeous patterns on that guy. Striking. Got a little small mouth. So after fishing upstream a ways with only moderate success, it's been a little slow. It's in the middle of the day here, uh, but uh, I'm starting to work my way back down and I'm making casts. Hopefully we can uh, get into some more fish here. There's a little guy. The creek was getting pretty stagnant upstream. So I uh, decided to turn around, start working my way back down. The day's not even close to over yet. Got so much more water to hit and I uh, actually got some incredible holes downstream of where I first started this morning. So lots more fishing to go. Uh, the bite has slowed just a little bit for sure. Um, but that hopefully that stagnant water had something to do with that and uh, hopefully we can keep getting into some more fish here. <laughs> I cannot mention enough how many butterflies are here. It's a butterfly plague. If you happen to know what species of butterfly these are, leave me a comment. I'm uh, definitely curious. Been going outside, spending the time in nature pretty much my whole life, and uh, I have legit never seen as many butterflies as I've seen today. Ah, see that splashing again? Looks like uh, suckers. Maybe doing some, some breeding stuff. I don't really know their uh, natural history all that well. But I definitely saw some some fins kind of splashing around the rocks there. There's a there's a bass. Finally, a real commit. Heck yes. Ooh, feels good. It's been a little slow for the last couple hours. We just kept at it. Our pattern is still working. Ooh, heck yeah. Such spunky little fish. If you force me, I'm gonna say smallmouth bass are my favorite fish every time. <laughs> yes, come here, my friend. Oh, not yet, not yet. I got a long line, it's a little tough. There we go. Nice chunky little fish.
<laughs> right in the rapids, trout style. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, another uh, horny head chub, I believe. On second thought, maybe not a horny head chub. Really pretty patterns. The scales are absolutely gorgeous. Let me know if you know what this guy is. I'm so rusty out here. I'm out of my element. Who knows what we'll pull out next? That is why I love fishing in places like this just so absolutely much. Trout streams out west, man, they sure are beautiful and grand and scenic. And uh, if you don't fish them a lot, I uh, certainly see why they're kind of the crown jewels of the fly fishing worlds. But uh, to be able to come and explore a place like this, man, it just makes me feel like a kid again. Coming up on some really, really cool structure in a little bit here. Limestone cliffs dropping right into the water. Such a fun day today. The sun is beginning to set here. Day is coming to an end. It's been absolutely incredible fishing this rugged canyon. Limestone cliffs, maybe 60, 70 feet tall. What a cool spot to catch some feisty smallmouth. Hope you guys enjoyed my little smallmouth adventure today in this incredible place. Really do appreciate you all. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. If you'd like to watch my previous visit to this river, click the video above.